My name is Chris Armitage. I'm the CEO of the Global Evergreening Alliance, and I'd like to warmly welcome everyone who's joining us today for the launch of our Global Restoration Monitor. When I say our, I mean it in the broadest sense. The Global Restoration Monitor is an inclusive and collaborative platform. It's been developed and will continue to be used, extended and refined by many of the largest and the most capable project implementers, by NGOs, and by technical and research organizations from around the world. And it's accessible to everyone. But before we get into the details, I'd like to share a brief introductory video. The Global Restoration Monitor was conceived as the solution to a global challenge. In January 2018, stakeholders from around the world came together at the Global Good, which is a Gates think tank in Seattle. Our mission was to understand and overcome the barriers to scaling up proven effective and extremely accessible land restoration approaches, such as farmer managed natural regeneration or FMNR. These practices are being organically adopted by millions of the world's poorest small-scale farmers, but the rate of their adoption is very slow, and land degradation and the increasing impacts of climate change are overtaking us. As a global community, we're running out of time. The overarching problem we identified was a lack of collectives of which have been designed to respond to the needs of discrete grants. These projects generally don't have the opportunity to build on, to harmonize with, or to learn from the lessons, the innovations, and the successes or failures of others. Moreover, while we all recognize the urgent need for really effective, massive scale collaboration, most donors, governments, and private sector interests don't recognize the enormous collective capacity and the experience of NGOs to support positive impact at the grassroots because this multitude of fragmented projects are largely invisible. Why? Because each of them monitors progress and impact in a different way. And there's no single data repository or platform to provide visibility to the mosaic of projects across the landscape. The Global Restoration Monitor has been developed for precisely this purpose. 
It's been built from the perspective of NGOs, particularly focusing on the needs and interests of the organisations that implement projects on the ground. In fact, the first six months of its development were spent designing indicators that could be consistently applied by any organisation in any country and finding ways to share, manage and collate sensitive project data without compromising the interests or the security of project implementers or of the small scale farmers, pastoralists and rural communities these projects support. The Global Restoration Monitor has been designed to harmonise with and adapt to the needs of any organisation, accepting detailed geo-referenced field data collected through the downloadable smartphone apps that we've developed, or through a variety of other apps or through paper surveys. This data is correlated with remote sensing data from high resolution satellite imagery and used to track the progress and impact of land restoration projects at any scale in near real time. The platform can be used for a variety of purposes by different stakeholders. Firstly, it provides an accessible system of record, including a geographic inventory of all significant land restoration projects, regardless of which organisation or which institution is implementing them. Then, it provides a framework for consistent monitoring and evaluation. Standardised indicators, tools and protocols support efficient monitoring of progress and impact while ensuring seamless contributions to relevant regional and global restoration, climate change mitigation and development targets, such as the SDGs. Also, it provides a tool for collaboration, increased visibility of projects, standardised indicators, and we hope the increased availability of funding for scaling up effective restoration practices reduces the barriers and increases incentives and opportunities for NGOs and for scientific and technical organisations to work more collaboratively. And finally, it provides a tool for decision support. The geographic distribution of biophysical, socioeconomic and land use indicators can be analysed, summarised and easily accessed by decision makers and planners. This information will inform the design of appropriate policies and interventions that address the areas of greatest need and build effectively on the existing successful programs and on the existing capacity on the ground. But the real value of the Global Restoration Monitor and its point of differentiation is in its alignment with the needs and the interests of grassroots project implementers and its ability to track the progress and real impact of projects on the ground. To speak to this topic in more detail, I'd like to hand over to Winfrieda Kipondja of Care International so thank you very much, Chris. I'm very happy uh, for this opportunity and I'm very happy to be here with you all. My name is Winifrida Kiponje. I work for Care Tanzania as MIR coordinator. I am really very happy to participate in this launching of the monitoring platform. So I would like to talk a little bit of how uh, this platform will be useful and highlight why it is important to have a platform like this and how local communities whom we are going to work with will be involved. Among of the importance of monitoring and evaluation is to facilitate participation and ownership of project activities. So uh, by involving local communities, it allows local participation in data correction interpretation and decision making about changes to their socioeconomic activities. With these approaches, you can be assured that it gives a great integration of local knowledge and perspective uh, with that of uh, modern knowledge in monitoring and management of um, uh, various projects, including land restoration initiatives for sustainability. So uh, it is very important to invest in community reporting for them to be able to participate in data correction activities. Uh, for upcoming projects like this, uh, we need to show the visibility of community activities in terms of data, um, but also we need to invest in technologies that are, are more friendly, um, that can be applied at all levels of 
data correction, including household level. For the platform uh, that we are launching, communities will be involved uh, in data correction where the use of mobile phones will be used to correct uh, household data and also will be able to employ uh, GIS and remote sensing uh, on various areas, for example, on land restoration practices at local level, regional, international, and, and national use. So uh, it is also uh, for uh, local community. We really need to, uh, to involve them to better understand um, that whatever they are doing, it is important for them to see the changes uh, on, of their interventions. At the grassroots level, they will better understand uh, whatever they are doing. Uh, it is not just for the sake of doing. There are some changes that they will experience. Uh, so socially and economically, and even for their own well-being. If they to compare and see what are the changes uh, on what they invested and uh, and what they have gained, then that gives them motivation as well. But also they see the profits that is of use for 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 household level and even for for community as well. My dream is to ensure that uh, the community is well equipped uh, in whatever uh, activities that they are doing, they will be able to, to provide uh, the real information that will be useful for them, not only uh, for, for donors or for government, but also for them at their levels, but also for planning and for, for decision making. So I think I will be very happy to work uh, with the communities and to ensure that I get something which is from the ground, is the real situation. Uh, this is very important and I really appreciate uh, having this kind of platform uh, to be used and to be integrated uh, uh, to all communities in Nepal. So thank you very much. Thanks very much, Winfreda. And now I'd like to pass to Fred Stoll from the World Resources Institute. Yes, uh, thank you um, for that. Um, from the detailed talk on, on where we are on the local level, I want to go on a little bit on the idea to zoom out and think about what is happening on restoration, what's the global picture? And you know, important part to think on the global picture you've seen in this slide, there's so much happening on restoration. Um, there's the trillion trees that are uh, planting new trees, companies who are pledging uh, zero carbon emission. The IPC report came out that he said that you know we need to have you know planting trees, negative emission as they call it, to get to the two degrees and one and a half degrees. Uh, and not only that, no. All kind of countries have also really see the value of restoration and, and also you know, enormous amount of pledges, pledges from countries. So in Africa, more than 100 million hectares pledged to restore. In Latin America, over 20 million hectares. The bond challenge, new declarations, European and the Caucasus Initiative, the ECA 30. And of course, these climate countries have a lot to gain from restoration, not only for the carbon sequestration, but also biodiversity, but also just rural agricultural development. So there's a lot of movement in the restoration and a lot of interest. But you see in the next slide, there's a little bit of an imbalance. There is an imbalance between the investments and the goodwill of countries and nations and companies and citizens to how to measure all this. There is also a bit of lack of implementation, but especially interested here in this talk, I want to talk about you know, the pay for performance. We want to understand if you plant a tree, how much carbon 
it sequesters, what it does for biodiversity. We don't want to be in a situation where we were with the reduced emission of deforestation initiatives that we first had a very good idea what it would be, and then had to figure it out how to monitor it. We want to track it. We also want to understand how much impact it has on climate, so we know what another climate measures we need to do. So it becomes very important that we get an idea how to measure that. And, you know, the, the need for data baselines and monitoring in, in my world, MRV speak, measure, report, and verify, is very important. We need to understand on a global level consistently what's happening around the world, you know, our global climate cycle. But also we need to, to understand where are we with those challenges? Uh, are we getting close in this nation to having 50 million hectares restored so like an Ethiopia pledge? Uh, incredible, interesting. And, and but also for the investors, if you want to invest in something, once you want to return, how much carbon will be surface? What's happening in biodiversity? And so it's incredibly important also to really track those changes. And um, then it's not as easy maybe as we thought it would be, at least as I thought it would be, come from deforestation monitoring, so, you know, that just the other sides. But it's actually kind of complicated. Of course, trees grow slow. So you plant a tree, it's a very small little tiny plant, little seedling becomes a little sapling. That's difficult to monitoring from space. It's also often dispersed. It can happen as reforestation, but also it can be trees dispersed in agricultural landscapes. And also restoration can look different for different people. When it's restored, what does it actually restored mean on under restoration? It's not as easy and clear as, as the deforestation. So, um, so, so we think about monitoring in three scales, and that is a little bit on the global scale, where you really want to see where are you with the pledges, where are we with the global cycles. On the landscape scale, where you want to, could be a jurisdiction, a district, a province, but it can also be a, a, a landscape that isn't a jurisdiction, to think about like, what is happening in this landscape. If there's a project here, what is happening with the, last, the rest of the landscape? You don't want a great green island and devastation around it. And then on a project scale, where every tree counts, on the global level, of course, you talk about millions of hectares and 10,000 hectares on a project scale. You talk about every tree. As you can imagine, that's a very different way of monitoring and tracking change than on that global scale. And as I said, restoration looks different for different people. Therefore, you have to think about what's your baseline and where do you want to be? What's your goal? You need to know that to understand if you're getting close to your goal. And as I said, it's not only forests, it's also restoration in the rural agricultural landscape. Dispersed trees in the agriculture along boundaries, along rivers. Again, very difficult to measure for, for satellite imagery. And then, of course, there is the need to understand the entire picture of, of the landscape. Um, it's great if there's restoration, but what is deforestation doing? And as you see here, you know, a case study, and it's not so much in the numbers, but it's the trend that you see here in Latin America, where there's a lot of restoration going. You see those green bars, that's all restoration. But at the same time, there's a lot of deforestation going on. So nets, not much change. In some countries, there is. In some countries, there's actually more deforestation going on. We have to think about it. How do we combine that? So again, getting restoration at larger picture, it's not easy. Now, luckily, there has a lot of groups working on it. It's great partners and great links with many of these organizations and other who are thinking about it, working on new ideas, working on better monitoring, better platforms, trying to figure out all, you know, how we can get a handle on this, you know, especially in this UN decade for restoration that will start in January 1. So it's, a, it's to be excited to be one of those groups here to start thinking about it. And of course, all those data and information is nothing if it's not distributed, transparent, and open. And that's where the platforms are so important. And you know, I think about one of the platforms from our own organization, from World Resource Institute, we have the Global Forest Watch, you know, a platform that made it accessible to everybody in the world to see the local, the region, on the global scale of deforestation. So those platforms become big tools for us to understand where we are in restoration. And so therefore, I'm very happy to introduce the next speaker from the Global Evergreening Alliance, you know, Talia, who will walk us through their new platform. And I think it's very excited to see that. Talia, the floor is yours. Thanks, Fred. And you're exactly right. 
For significant global movement, we need targeted local action. Hi everyone, my name is Talia Laini and I work in monitoring at the Global Evergreening Alliance. It is my absolute pleasure to be here today to introduce our monitoring platform, the Global Restoration Monitor. The restoration movement is gaining significant traction right now, and we are thrilled to be involved in this exciting and rapidly evolving space. The Global Restoration Monitor represents this global movement, but with a key focus on local action. It has been designed to track the progress and impact of land restoration projects in near real time. Central to this platform, and possibly its greatest strength, is the focus on extremely detailed ground level data. We not only recognize the potential for restoration moving forward, we also recognize the incredible work that is happening right now. We want to shine the light on these stories and Global Restoration Monitor is going to help us achieve this. Let's meet the people, the farmers and the communities that are already engaging in amazing restoration work. Okay, let's take a look at the platform. We can navigate around the platform through a number of ways, one of which is the bookmark bar right here. How about we go to the Dominican Republic? Here we can view a project by our amazing friends at Plant With Purpose. To get a better look at the project site, we can unclick the project areas layer over here We can also get an overview of the project by clicking on this point, and we can see the impact of this work on the ground. As we have just seen, each project site has a corresponding pop-up that explains the project and links into the organization's website and media. This is a vital feature of the platform, as without highlighting these stories, we are missing the biggest part of the picture. Many of the organisations represented on the platform adopt a landscape approach to their projects, with many working with communities across districts or watersheds, represented here by the blue polygons. Having this visually displayed is not only great for seeing the extent of possible impact of the restoration work, but it also translates as a useful tool for project developers or donors to locate and assess target areas for future projects. In this sense, the Global Restoration Monitor provides both incentive and the tools needed for restoration to be scaled out and up. Now, it's all about balance. And another way we are tracking impact is through the indicators displayed around the map. An equal focus on socioeconomic and biophysical indicators ensures that all stakeholders, people and nature, are receiving benefits from these projects. The results? Positive outcomes for livelihoods and biodiversity. As we keep developing this platform together, we will be able to track progress and impact over time with regular updates to data from our members, as well as the Alliance's upcoming Restore projects coming soon to Australia and Eastern and Southern Africa. To streamline this process, we believe we should work towards standardising our approaches to collecting data. This includes our indicators, our tools and our methodologies. And to achieve this, we are developing a suite of data collection tools, including farm, tree and rangeland surveys. Remote sensing will also be integrated to validate the extensive data collected on ground. Together with our own research and ongoing collaboration with members, we plan to integrate the most cutting edge remote sensing and AI technologies into the platform. These tools add to our collective vision of standardizing restoration data collection to achieve maximum impact on a global scale. I believe that together we can achieve amazing things. It has been my absolute pleasure to introduce and walk through the Global Restoration Monitor with you all. Now it's your turn. After we finish up, why don't you jump on our website and take a look for yourself. The address will be in the chat shortly. Thank you very much for your time and I will now hand back to Chris.
Thanks, Talia. As I mentioned earlier, the Global Restoration Monitor is ours collectively. It belongs to all of us. And it's been developed collaboratively by a large number of diverse stakeholders, including development and environmental NGOs, academic, scientific, technical and research institutions, political and private sector actors, and grassroots organisations. While there are too many to thank by name, I'd like to acknowledge the valuable support we've received from so many organisations. I'd also like to call out and warmly thank a handful of organisations that have gone above and beyond what we could have expected, including ESRI, KPMG, CRS, World Vision, Conservation International, the Heiderhoff Foundation, the University of Berlin, Mike Ruth, Talia Liney, Nick Metherill, and the rest of the Secretariat team at the Global Evergreening Alliance, and of course, Care International and the World Resources Institute that are represented here today by Winfrieda Kapondia and Fred Stoll. Together, we've identified the pressing need for a platform that can provide clear visibility of the progress and impact of land restoration projects around the world to allow for better coordination and alignment of our efforts to support more accurate accounting of the carbon being sequestered into the landscape, to support improved planning and decision-making, and a greater appreciation of the collective capacity and the impact of grassroots project implementers. And together, we've built the tools to deliver against this need. Tools that can support more collaborative, more efficient and impactful land restoration efforts at the massive scales required to transform landscapes and to begin to address climate change. However, the value of the global restoration platform is inextricably linked and proportional to the extent to which it's used. So I appeal to you all, the global community, to embrace this global restoration platform, to represent your projects on it, to use it, and to work with us to continue to refine and improve it over the months and years ahead. Together, we can scale up our collective impact and with your help, together, we can green up to cool down the planet. But before I go, I just wanted to invite you all to participate in the chat room, which is where I'm headed now. Thank you again. Good night.